teachings of Rabbi Ephraim Sprecher, Dean of Students at Diaspora Yeshiva on Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Purim, there's a mitzvah to drink, but is there a mitzvah to get drunk? It's very strange that the rabbis, one, one, one page, one page per customer. One page per customer with two sides. Purim, why is there a mitzvah to drink? It's very strange that the rabbis would make it a mitzvah to get drunk. We know that uh, getting drunk leads to many sins, immorality and other sins. So why would the rabbis command us to get drunk, or did they? It's one of the mitzvahs on Purim, right? There are six mitzvahs on Purim. What are the six mitzvahs on Purim? Number one, to read the Megillah in the morning and the evening. Number two, to say Al Anisim. Number three, to read Vayova Yamolek on Purim morning, which is in Jerusalem Wednesday morning. The third mitzvah is to read Pashas B'Shalach Vayova Yamolek. The fourth mitzvah is Matonos Levionim. The fifth mitzvah is Meshwayach Monot. And uh, number six, Achron Achron Chaviv, is to have a Suda Im Yayin. Is to have a meal, a festive meal together with wine. There's no mitzvah to, bring, to drink J and B, Jewish booze. The mitzvah is to drink Yayin, Dafke Betol Chasuda. The question is how much and why? So that's the six mitzvah, Suda Im Yayin. Not yayin alone, but dafke betol chasuda to drink yayin. The question is why and how much do we have to drink? So if you look at side number one, the Orech HaShulchan, on side number one, it's source five, he quotes, Amna Rabbeinu Abes Yosef, Besifra Godol Kosa Bisham Orech HaShayin. He says, Chayiv Vunish Zulm A person has to be, a person has to, uh, imbibe himself or imbibe himself the poraya not to the point that he has to get shikr or Shulchan says he should drink but not to get shikr because shikr is a isher gomor source number five there's no greater sin than getting drunk you hear Getting drunk leads to sexual immorality, even to murder. So what should you do on Purim? Drink more than what? Than regular. Drink more than regular and what? And go to sleep. And sleep like a baby. Last night I slept like a baby, Moshe. I woke up crying every hour. <laughs> you sleep like a baby, right? Right? So if you're not supposed to get drunk, how come the Gemara says, Adelo Yoda? You should drink so much, you don't know the difference between what? Haman and Mordechai. So this, that means pretty smashed, right? Perush, Achstam Rabbeinu Abes Yosef, the Shulchan Aruch says, the Shulchan Aruch seems to say, Shik was Gemura. The Shulchan Aruch seems to say you should get Mami Shikr. The Torah Hiyun. And that's very problematic, he says, uh, to get drunk because drinking leads to many sins. So the question is, why do you have to drink on Purim? If you look at Megillah Sesta, all of the miracles surrounded what? The Mishtayayin. Right? Vashti lost her head during a drinking party. Mordechai, Esther was crowned queen in a drinking party. So all of the miracles from Purim, Haman met his downfall on the drinking party, all of the miracles from Purim revolve around drinking parties. So therefore to publicize the miracles, we're supposed to drink yayin, which all the Nesim of Purim took place, derech yayin. Mishirechnes yayin yoytzei soid. Yayin is gematria of what? Yud yud nun is how much? 50, 70, and soid? Samach Vav Dalit is also what? 70, right? So the question is, why did the rabbis tell us to drink so much? Or did they? So if you look at source number six, the Bir Halacha, source number six, much of the story of Purim revolves around meals where wine was consumed. So we drink wine as it plays a role in our recalling the story but not to the point of acting irresponsible. So I'm reading the Be'er Halacha, this is the Mishnah Brura. 
Chayiv inish, a person has to drink. Vim Taimar, the Bialoch has to question the source number six. Hech Yichayivu Chazal, Ma Sheniske Batora, Benevim, Bekama Makaimos, Hashikmiz Mishogodo. How could the rabbi tell you to drink? Throughout Tanakh, we see that drinking leads to what? Problems. Immorality. Look what happened to Noah, he got drunk. Look what happened to uh, Lot when he got drunk. So, how could the rabbis tell us to drink? The Yesh Loimar says the Chofetz Chaim Vir Halacha in Source 6. The Nesha Kol Hanisim Shenasu Yisoy Bemechashverosh Aidei Mishta. All of the miracles in the Megillah happen through what? Drinking party. Ki Betchila Nitudo Vashti Aidei Mishta. Vashti lost her life because she refused to come to the king wearing a birthday suit. Birthday suit, and that also happened Mishta Yayin. The boy Esther, and Esther was coronated as the queen through a drinking party. V'chein inyan Haman, Haman got his mapal also yidei Mishta. V'lechein, and therefore, chivu chachamim, therefore the rabbis commanded, l'ishtaker, to get drunk, at k'dei shei niskar hanes ha-gadol, l'ishti as yayin. V'chol makoim, kol zeh l'mitzvah v'loy l'akev. Adelo yoda. Adela Yoda, that's pretty smashed. That, you know no difference between Haman and Mordechai. Why do you have to get drinks so much? So the Be'er Halacha quotes the Me'iri. Chayiv Adam lahar boys besimcha biyomze. A person is obligated to increase joy biyomze bachila b'shtia. Atzla yechsa shimdav until nothing is lacking. Umikal makaim says the Me'iri, one of the great Rishonim. Ain onu mitzuvin lishtaker. You're not commanded to get shikr. Drink, but not drunk. You hear know what he's saying? And, and diminish ourselves. Because the person gets drunk, he makes an idiot out of himself. You're not commanded to make a fool out of yourself. To thank God for the miracles that he did. He quotes the Chayodam. Kivin Shakola and Eshoye Daya. You know, all the Nisim in the uh, Purim story happened through drinking wine. Lechain, therefore, Chibu Chachamim, the rabbis commanded us, Lishtake, Lapochas, Lishtad Yosef, drink more than normal in order to, what, to remember the great miracle. But not to make a fool out of yourself. The Chol Masech or Yil Hashem Shemayim. Whatever you do, do it for the sake of heaven. So what does it mean to get drunk on Purim? Does it mean to get drunk on wine? Or does it mean to get drunk with the day itself? To become high on Purim with the day itself. That's the Chidush we're going to learn today. You look at side number two. This is the Chidush of the Slanama Rebbe. Side number two is source seven. This is the Slanama Rebbe. And he says, Chayiv Inish, when the Gemara says a person is obligated to get high on Purim, Adeloyoda, it means to get high on Purim, Chayiv Inish, source number seven, Lusuba Parai, Adeloyoda, until he doesn't know the difference between Haman and Mordechai. Hine Chiyuv Zehu Minadvarim, this is a Pele. Sharei Purim, Yoim Godel the Kadosh, Ad Maod. Purim is a great holy day. The Harbe in Yonim in Purim. Shu Yom Kippurim. The Zoya says that Purim is a day like what? Yom Kippurim. A day like Purim. Because just like Yom Kippur was a day when we got to Torah, what's the connection between Purim and Yom Kippur? When did we get to second Luchos? On Yom Kippur. Purim is like Yom Kippur. It's a day of Kabbalah Satoira. This time we got to Torah again. The first time was a shotgun wedding. But on Purim, we got the Torah again, Bahava, and that's a Bagdrega Yosef Gevoa, Mimamid Har Sinai. You hear what he's saying? Just like in Kippur, we got the Torah, the second Luchos. Purim, we got a new Kabbalah of Torah, unlike the first time when we were forced, God held a mouth over our heads and said, if you, don't, if you don't say I do, it's all over. In Virginia, they called it a shotgun wedding. But on Purim, we accepted the Torah, Bahava, Baratzon. So Purim is even a greater day than what? Than Shavuos or Yom Kippur. 
So how could the rabbis command us to get smashed on such a holy day? A day like Yom Kippur, we got the Torah again. Be'ahava b'simcha, not being forced. It's a day like Yom Kippur, like Kabbalah's Torah. How could the rabbis command us to get drunk? So he's, his chiddush over here is, take a look at his chiddush over here. I think it's underlined in yellow. Chayi finish beside the pariah, the loy umru, the yayin. The Slonim Rebbe says you're supposed to get high on Purim not through wine, but you're supposed to get high with the day itself. I think it's underlined in yellow, you don't know? She yishtake ha Purim atzmoi. Velomi yayin. You hear, you're supposed to get high from the day, not from the wine. Is what Moses and the, and the Zakanim were eight drink, they say they didn't really eat drink, they got high in spirituality. So here's the same Okay, thing. very good that you're saying. You make a big Kiddush. Vayochal Ishtar Kabbalah Satoira in Pasha's Mishpatim, Yehuda mentions, it says the Jews had a big feast, they ate and they drank. Unkula says, they didn't actually eat and drink, but they got beautiful, what you're saying, Yehuda. They got high from the day of Kabbalah Satoira. When they saw God's vision, he saw his godly throne, it says, Vayochal Vayishtu. Unkula says, Ki'ilu. They were so satisfied with the spiritual high of observing the Shekhinah as if they feasted. But they didn't actually, so the Flala Rebbe is saying that Purim, you should be get high on the Kiddush of the day itself by drinking a little bit of wine and that should stimulate you to what? To meditate on the Kiddush of the day. So you're supposed to get high on Purim itself. Let the greatness of this day come in completely. Bring it into our souls. So the yayin is there to help us along the way. This is source number eight, Chava. You have that at Shloyme Aviner. He says something amazing. He says that the gematria of Boruch Mordechai and Oro Homon are what? The same gematria. Kawinki dinky. Blessing Mordechai and cursing Homon has the same numerical value of 502. Why? And what's the message? Blessing Mordechai and cursing Haman is equal numerical value. What's the point? So Shleim Avinair says in source number eight, drinking until we can no longer distinguish between what? Blessing Mordechai and cursing Haman means that we acknowledge what seems to be polar opposites from our perspective are really what? The same. One and the same from God's perspective. Wow. Whether it's Borech Mordechai, or whether it's Or Haman, to us it's two opposites, Moshe. To God it's what? It's one and the same. But I can't stay sober to, to comprehend that. Gotta get a little bit shicker to take that in. Acknowledge limitations of our perspective, embrace which is unknown. Purim is such a great yantiv because Purim is the same idea of Shema Yisrael. When we say Shema Yisrael, what does Kabbalah's O Malcha Shemayim mean? Why is that statement Shema Yisrael, Yehadut in one sentence? Every loyal Jew wants to die with that sentence on his lips, because somehow Shema Yisrael is Yehadut in one sentence. And that's called Kabbalah's O Malcha Shemayim. What does that mean? Shema Yisrael, listen Jew, who are you talking to? Hashem, what's Hashem? Yud Kei Vav Kei, that's, that's Borech Mordechai. Elokeinu, let the good times, Hashem is let the good times roll. Yud Kei Vav Kei, Rachamim, Borech Mordechai, what's Elokeinu? That's Haman. Oru Haman? Oru Haman, Elokeinu is din, it's punishment and suffering. To us it looks like totally opposite. Hashem Echad. From God's perspective, it's what? It's one. Don't you see why Yom Purim is such a great day? It tells us what Shema Yisrael tells us. That's Yahadut. Whether it's Boruch Mordechai, Yudke Vavke, or Chas V'Sholem Elokeinu, Haman, Din, Hashem Echad. From our perspective, he wants us to see two opposites. But from his perspective, it's all one. Do I see it? No, so therefore what? I cover my eyes. 
He doesn't want me to see it. That's the test. I cover my eyes because God covers himself, Kaviyochel, in the Megillah. God hides his identity. Peekaboo! God is wearing a mask. So Shema Yisrael, I'm covering my eyes. I'm also hiding my eyes. I can't see how Boruch, Mordechai, and Orohaman are the same. It's the same gematria. But I'm believing Jew, Kabbalah, so Malcha Shemayim means. Whether it's Boruch, Mordechai, Yud Kei Vavke, Yachas V'Sholem, Elokeinu, Din, Punishment, Hashem Echad. From God's perspective, it's all what? It's all one. I can't see it, so I cover my eyes, but I believe it. But Zechariah 14 tells us, Bayoimahu, Bayoimahu, Yashem Echad, Ushmo Echad. In that day, God will be one and his name one. So the Gemara in Psachim 50 asks, now he's not one? What do you mean he'll be? Zechariah was an Orthodox rabbi. What do you see? On that day, Avram, Zechariah 14, Bayoimahu, on that day, Yi Hashem Echad, Ushmo Echad. V'hashtalav Echad, says the Gemara in Psachim, now he's not one. Of course he's one now, but I can't see the oneness. I don't see how Mordechai and Haman are the same thing. I don't see how Yudke Vofke and Cain are the same thing. I don't see it, but I believe it. But Zechariah says, by Yoimahu, what does by Yoimahu mean? After 120, when the body suit comes off, when our mask comes off, what's my mask? The body, the body which is masking who I am, who am I? I'm a soul, man. I'm a Tzalem Alekim. I'm a godly soul. The body is my mask. It hides who I am. So after 120, says Zechariah, when my mask comes off, I won't have to hide my eyes anymore. I'll see how Hashem Echad Shmo Echad. I won't have to believe it only, but I'll actually see it. Now God doesn't want me to see it. But looking back from the perspective of eternity, I'll see that even the Oror Haman is Echad but Baruch Mordechai. Now that God doesn't want me to see it. He doesn't want me to see it. So he wears the mask, and I wear my mask, my bodysuit. So life is a game. God is playing hide and seek or peekaboo to give me free will in order that free will should work. But after 120, we'll see how it all makes sense. So Kabbalah so Malka Shemayim means what Purim means. Whether it's Yud Kei Vav Kei, the good times, the Chas V'Sholem Alekeinu, suffering and din, from our perspective, the two opposites, Hashem Echad. From God's perspective, it's all the same. Hakol Tova. Father knows best. Hakol Tova. Yes, you had a question. Yes, does that mean that whether I bless the good or curse the evil, it's all the same thing? Well, the Daf Yomi, we learned the other day, Kishem Shem Vorchem Ala Toiv, Kach Mevorchem Ala Ra. Just like you make a blessing on good, you make a blessing what? Bad. On bad. But you don't make the same blessing. No. For good, you say, Atov HaMetiv. And for bad, you make, Lo Yelenu Dayan Oemet. If everything is for the good, why don't you make Atov HaMetiv on everything? Why do you, lo, you have to make Lo Yelenu Dayan Oemet for? If Hakol Atova, so why do you make it a bad Psura a Dayan Oemet? Because it's not the same. Yeah, is it the same? I'm, I'm confused. Is it the same or it's not this the same? This is how we don't see it, right? This is how we don't see it. It's the same, but God doesn't want me to see it. Right. I have a question. One minute. So on a bed, I have to make dinette because I don't see the good. He don't want me to see the good. Right. This is the test. Hide your eyes. Believe it, but don't see it. But So the Gemara says in Oilam Abo, I told you that I made it for everything. Because we'll see the good. When the body suit, when our mask comes off, Ira, what's my mask? My body suit. Then I'll see Hakol Tova, and then there'll only be one bracha. But now, when I'm wearing my mask, which is the body suit, for Vapsura Rolo Yelenu, God wants you to make Dino MS. So then. Not to confuse me, but to give me what, Zizel? Free will. Otherwise, I'd be a puppet. God doesn't want puppets, he wants what? Partners. So therefore he has to wear the mask of what? Of tzorot, of bad times, in order for me to what? Choose correctly, but I have to choose. 
But this is that's right. what makes me human and that's what makes me God's partner that I, but I can only choose if God wears the mask. Because if we take the mask off, like in Olam Emet, we're robots. The Neshama is a robot. So God sends us down here in a bodysuit to be tested and tried. Lily, and only when the going gets tough do the tough go shopping. No, when the going gets tough, can the tough get going? But the Neshama has no free will. So that's the challenge that we're down here for 120 years in order to what? To perfect ourselves, become God's partner, and then to rejoin him after 120. But let's not be in a hurry to get there, yes? I learned that the Goyim are the whip in the hands of Hashem. Yes. And that, uh, and that uh, Hashem uh, sends Shlichim through the Goyim. Like That's Karo true. Like and, and Haman to get us to do Tshuva. That's exactly so right. it's not that we're blinded when we're in the moment of Purim and this and that. Right. It's so hard to see clearly. Of it's course. It's so hard to, uh, you know, to up rise above our fears and our anxieties and our... Nahon. But all, but all of life is a test. It's a challenge and a test. If you look in the Megillah of Esther, we read it in 45 minutes, right? But uh, the Megillah played out over nine years. Twelve? No. Nine. When Esther won the beauty contest, only nine years later was Haman swinging from the tree. Oh, no. Not 45 minutes like we read it. When Esther was taken captive, she had no idea, what am I doing? A base Yaakov girl, what am I doing in the house of the slob? Only nine years later did she realize that what? Hello? She but she couldn't see nine years before. What am I doing there for nine years? But that's the game that Hashem plays with us. The word olam. What does word olam mean? Ne'elam. It's all a game. All of life is, is a game. All, the word world means hidden. God plays like you play with your kid. I think it's called peek a hide and seek in order for free will to operate. Because God doesn't want puppets. He wants partners. And he can only do that if he plays the hide and seek with us to choose him. But if God were to remove his mask, then we have no free will. Then who needs us? Might as well stay up there. Yes, Miriam, you had a question? Esther Young Rice wrote right. an excellent book called Life is a Test. Life is a Test, right? This is only a test, a survivor, right? A hero, right? When the going gets tough, only then can the tough get going, right? Mm -hmm. the, four, the shortest Mishten Shas, Ira, three words, Lefum Tsara Agra. The, four, the shortest Mishten Shas in the Sechta of both, three words, Lefum Tsara Agra. According to the pain is the gain. There's an amazing, uh, we know Tilim 22, Ayela Tashachar. The Gemara says, who's Ayela Tashachar? Esther. Why is Esther called Ayela Tashachar in Tilim 22? So Rashi says from the Gemara, the word Shachar means dawn. But the word Shachar is the same root as the word Shachor. Black is black. What has dawn got to do with black? It's always dark. Uh, the darkest hour is what? Before dawn. Right before dawn. It says the Vilna Gon, the darkest hour is right before dawn in the physical world. It's certainly true in the spiritual world. When did Esther appear on the Jewish scene? When it was the blackest for the Jewish people. It looks like it's all over. So she's called Ayelet Tashachar. The blackest part of the night is when the morning star comes. And Esther appeared on the Jewish scene when it was the darkest time in Jewish history. So she's called Ayelet HaShachar. When things look black, then you know that what? The Geula is what? Around here, around the when is the birth of a baby? When the woman's labor pains are the sharpest and the most severe, that's when the baby is born. That's why God set up the system. When the night is blackest, the dawn is coming, the labor pains are the sharpest, the baby is born, Ayela Tashachar. It's pretty amazing. Mishenechna Sadar Marbim Besimcha. It's a Gemara and Tainus, by the way, not in the Megillah. Mishenechna Sadar Marbim Besimcha. What about Nisan? Am I chopped liver? Mishenechna's Nisan Marbim Besimcha. What's so special about Adar? What about Nisan? 
when we got all the supernatural miracles, splitting of the Red Sea, the ten plagues, quail, mon, water from a rock, that's not Marbin Besimcha. There were no supernatural miracles in Adar. Not a one. God's name is not mentioned in the Megillah, not even once. So what's the great Simcha? Miriam, if you analyze a question carefully, half of the answer is where? In the question. Let me repeat my question again and you'll see. Adar, there were no supernatural miracles, no splitting of the Red Sea, no donuts from heaven. God's name is not even in the Megillah. What's the, the great Simcha? That's the point. God is not just in the supernatural razzle-dazzle miracles. He's not just in the big ticket items like splitting of the Red Sea or the Mun or the plagues. The great Simcha is when you think he's not there. When there are no supernatural miracles, the splitting of the Red Sea, and no ten plagues. Every moment that you live, God is holding my hand, but he's behind the scenes. He's wearing the Purim mask. That makes me very happy. I don't put him only in the supernatural. I'm not putting God in a box. Nisan is all about Nisan. But Adar, the great joy is everything that happens in my life, in my mundane little life, having a good hair day or a bad hair day, it's the same God who split the Red Sea, Ira. You're having a good day or a bad hair day? Who's responsible? It's not your boss, it's not your wife, it's not the neighbor giving you a hard time. It's a Kurdish Baruch Hu. He's there holding your hand but he's wearing a mask. What's the mask called? Kwinky dinky? Mikre? Mikre? Mem kuf reshe? Mikre? Rearrange the letters Mem kuf reshe. What do you get, Ira? Rock me Hashem. That's the great joy of Adar. There is no supernatural miracles. It looks like God is not there. But that's just what? A Purim spiel. <laughs> he's there. He's holding my hand. But he's behind the scenes, he's behind the mask. He's playing hide and seek and peekaboo with me. That gives me the great simcha that I'm never alone, whatever happens to me. Good, the the better, it's all him. Whether it's Boruch Mordechai or Chasfisholem or Rahoman, it's the same gematria. That's not a kawinky dinky either. That's why Purim is such a great yontif. Purim is the same idea of Shema Yisrael. It's Kabbalah or Malcha Shemayim. Whatever happens to me in life, it's Hashem Echad. Doesn't that give me great joy? Hmm? It's all Him. And Father knows best. And He's always holding my hand. Whatever happens to me. That's the reason for the great Simcha. Now, during Mordechai and Esther's time, there was a great prophet called Zechariah. Zechariah was a contemporary of Mordechai and Esther. When he prophesied, Jerusalem lay in ruins. The Buchanetra had destroyed the temple, the whole country was in ruins. And Zechariah, contemporary of Mordechai and Esther, says something amazing. Koyomar Hashem. O the Yeshvu Zikainim Bechavah Yishalayim. Old people will fill up the park benches in the streets of Jerusalem. Verechavah Teir Yemolu Yeladim Esachim. And the streets of Jerusalem will be filled up with children playing all over the streets. Now when he said this, they said, Zechariah, take a pill and lie down. What are you talking about? When he said that the country was desolate, barren, the Jews were all deported where? To Babylon, Long Island, and Persia. What's he talking about? The streets of Jerusalem were filled with old people sitting in park benches and youngsters playing all over the place. What's he talking about? 24 years ago, what's he talking about? Now, God said, he said, it's a pillar. What's by Yom 
What are the Yom HaMahim? Those days Yom Mean days. Means today. Gam be'ena yipolein Hashem. God said it's a pel of my eyes too. Because Baruch says, you think it's a wonder? It's a wonder of my eyes too. That 2400 years after Zechariah made this prophecy, when the, com- com- the country was ruined, barren, destroyed, that the streets of Jerusalem are a start-up nation. All over in Jerusalem, wherever you go, Moshe, they're building. The national bird of, of Eretz Yisrael is the building crane. That's Get it? Building crane. So interesting. Wherever you go, it's all booming and building. Well, Zechariah said it 24 years ago. God says, Ki yipoleb, in my eyes, it's also a pillar. Kaviyoko, God says about himself. Where is Hitler? Where is Shushan Abira? Where is Haman? Gone with the wind. But we are here. Better than ever, stronger than ever. God said, that's a pillar, even in my eyes. All of our persecutors and tormentors are gone with the wind. But the Jewish people are here better and stronger than ever. I think it's called the super startup nation. God said, that's a pele. And we should be marvel. We shouldn't take it for granted. It should be a pele. In our, if God says a pele in my eyes, Zechariah chapter 8, then we should also be what, astounded of this great miracle that the Jewish people have come back. Who comes back after 2,400 years? Anybody come back? Oh, who comes back? What? And therefore, there's something very strange in the Megillah. Mordechai is the God of Hador. Moshe is the Rav He's the head of the Sanhedrin. How does the Megillah call him? Mordechai a Yehudi. Mordechai the Jew boy. Ish Yehudi, a Jewish man. That's what he called the God of Hador. Imagine calling Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Imagine calling him uh, a Yehudi. Moshe the Jew boy. What's going on over here? Harav Agun Mordechai the Rosh of the Sanhedrin. Why do you call him Mordechai Yehudi? Mordechai the Jew boy. Or Ish Yehudi. What's the message of the, of the Megillah? That's the reason for the Simcha. The very fact that I'm a Jew and not a Goy. I don't need any titles. The fact that I'm a Jew, that I'm an eternal people. That gives me great joy. I don't need the titles. Mordechai Yehudi, Ish Yehudi, over and over again. That's the Simcha. Unlike all the other nations who are gone with the wind, the Jewish people are eternal. Because we're Yehudi. We have God's name, Yehuda. Yudke, Vavke. We are eternal people because God is eternal. And he put his name on us. Yehuda, that's God's name. We're a piece of the rock. Yehuda, Yud Kevavke. Isn't that amazing? That's the great Simcha. That's the great Simcha. You know, in all Jewish religion, uh, it revolves around manja food, right? They try to kill us, Ira, we won, so let's eat. Uh, why are you every religious occasion in Yahadut revolves around manja manja right because we're physical why is that let's we're get physical. physical who sang that we're uh what because we're physical we need but why you finish a tractate manja manja bris mila manja manja sheva brachas chasana bar mitzvah any religious occasion you finish for on friday oh you have to make a party Avram, why you ever wonder Right? They try to kill us. We won, so... We eat. We eat. So my Rebbe Rapam Zatzal said something incredible. He said, when there's a religious occasion in Yahadut, you finish a Masechta, a Shabbos, Yontif, Bris Mila, there's an incredible amount of Kedusha. Kedusha's in the air. Da, 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 da. There's extra Kedusha in the air as a result of what? Of finishing a Masechta, of attending a Bris Mila, Shabbos Kodesh, Yom Tev, Asudas Mitzvah, incredible amount of etzik, extra Kedusha that's permeating in the atmosphere that's being absorbed by the Neshama. Neshama is soaking up that Kedusha of the event, of the occasion. But the Guf says, hey, what about me? How do I participate in the uh, event of the finishing of the Masechta, of a... Bris Mila, the Kedusha there, 
a chasana, a bar mitzvah, so that mitzvah. The goof says, I'm also part of the mensch. How do I participate and get a piece of the action? What am I, chopped liver? You gotta eat the chopped By liver. eating the chopped liver or the gefilte fish, Lillian, I think it's called spiritual osmosis, my rabbi said. <laughs> You're transferring the kedusha of the event from the neshama to the goof through the chopped liver. I like chopped liver. Through the chopped liver. This way, the goof gets to participate in the kedusha of the event. That's why eating plays such a major role in all religious occasions in Yahadut. That's why the goof gets to participate in the, in the Kiddusha. So you're saying when the body is nourished, the neshama is, has kayach, in a way. No, the opposite. The body says, how do I participate in the Kiddusha of the event? How do I get to, to enjoy the Kiddusha? What am I, bystander? I'm also part of the human being. My Rebbe explained that eating is the spiritual, I think the word is called osmosis, Ira, where you transfer the Kiddusha from the neshama to the gulf by the act of eating. Therefore, eating plays such a central role in Yahadut. That's how the gulf gets to participate in the Kiddusha that's taking place when you finish a Masechta or attend the Brismila or a Shabbos and a Yonta, extra amount of Kiddusha that's floating around. So to absorb it, the gulf has to do it by eating. I think it's called spiritual transfusion. Pour him, huh? That's right. Pour him, saving the best for last. The last of the six mitzvahs, I is what? Suda with the iron. This way you get to transfer the kedusha of reading the Megillah, of saying Alanisim, of reading La Yovay Amalek, Mitonus of Yonim, Ashlach Monos. You did all of those mitzvahs. The Neshama is bursting with what? With kedusha. Now, how do I transform it to the goof? By making broth. By making, by eating, eating and drinking. Eating. Saving the best for last. So therefore, you save the meal for last. First, you wanted the Shema to absorb all the other five mitzvahs. Now I'm ready to make the transfusion, Lillian. Transfusion by drinking and eating what? The Sudat Mitzvah of Purim. Of the Sudat Mitzvah on Purim. So the six mitzvahs on Purim, people forget there's a mitzvah to say Alanisim. Now all the mitzvahs of Purim women have too. Even though it's time bound, and normally time bound mitzvahs women are what? Exempt. 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 But Purim, they have to do it because they were instrumental in the miracle. Women were instrumental in the miracle of Purim. Do you know that? Thank God. Women, it wasn't just Esther, but she, she represents the Jewish women. The Rav Weissmandl, you know who he wrote the book, Ben Ametza, he jumped from the moving train to Auschwitz and he survived. He wrote a book called Torah's Chemet. The guy was a genius before computers. He counted the letters in Megillat Esther, without a computer, Avram. Now you hear this, I hope you write this down. He said there's exactly 12,000 110 letters in Megillah Esther. Ira, how many letters on Megillah Esther? 12,110. What's amazing about that? Now hear this. Rav Weissmandl, Taras Chemet. He says, if you count from the first Aleph in Bereshus, Bereshus is an Aleph, count 12,110 letters, you'll get a Samach. Count another 12,110 letters, you'll get a Toph. Count another 12,110 letters, you're going to get what? Reish. Reish. Wow. I, I get it. So the amount of letters in Megillat Esther, her name is spelled out in the Torah, wow. Aleph, Samach, Tof, Reish, the exact amount of letters that's contained in the whole book of Esther. Wow. Hello. Wow. Now how could God know that when the, the Torah was written centuries before Esther? How did God know that? Aleph, Samach, Tof, Reish. Esther is spelled out in the same amount of letters, 12,110, as the, as, as the letters in Megillat Esther. Now, can that be, Zisel, a coincidence? Can it? Nope. What? Now, he figured this out before there was Google. In Torah's Chemet, the night for Rob, he survived Auschwitz, he opens up Yeshiva Mount Kisco, New York. Moshe, is this, a, is this just amazing? And he says, therefore, the rabbis are called sofrim. What does sofir mean? 
The rabbi's job is to count the letters in Tanakh. And therefore, if one letter is missing, it's not just one letter, but because the whole count is off. Wow. Isn't that just an amazing idea? Wow. wow. In Megillah says that 12,110 letters. And Aleph Samach Tov Reish, from the first Aleph and Bereshis, you count 12,000, you get Samach, another 12,110, you get a Tov, another, you get a Reish. So Megillah, her name, Esther, is skipped, stopped in the Torah, but the exact amount of letters contained in the whole book of Vat of Esther. Wow. That's pretty wild. Without a what? A computer. Wow. wow, that's just pretty amazing. What? What about Mordechai? Okay. He, he says Mordechai is a pretty amazing. Next week's Parsha's Kisisa. This is really incredible. Fast your seatbelts. Parsha's Kisisa always falls out, Chava. Purim time, except when it's a leap year. In Parsha's Kisisa, it mentions Mordoror. Mordoror, it, it means the chief of the spices or the 11 herbs and spices, more. Uncle says Mordoror, Mordechai. Uncle wow. says Mordoror, Mordechai. And the Gemara Megillah says, just like Mor is the chief of all the spices, Mordechai was the chief of the Sanhedrin. What's amazing about this, Torres Chemen, don't blame me. He says you count from the letter Mem in Mordoror, right. which Mordoror is Mordechai. Right. Count the letter Mem from Mordechai, from Mordechai, from Mordechai. Right. Count 12,110 letters, you'll get a Reish. No. Count another 12,110 letters, you'll get a Dalid. No. Count another 12,110 letters, you'll get a Kaf. Another 12,110, you'll get a Yud. So even Mordechai's name, for more Doror, in Parshish Kassisa, which always comes out on Purim, Mordechai's name is also spelled out in the skip letters, Twelve, uh, same amount of letters, Mordechai is spelled out, Mem, Reish, Dalit, Kaf, Yud, is spelled out, 12,110 letters, skip space, just like Esther, and it begins with the Mem in Mordechai, in Parshish Kassisa, which always is read on Purim, when it's not a leap year. So just amazing how, how the Torah is what? God's mind. So even though the Megillah happened how many centuries later, Chava? At least a thousand years later, but it's in there. The Gemara Megillah says, Esther ben Torah ben Ayin. Where's Esther in the Chumash? Devorim 31. Why is God's name not in the Megillah? Because Deuteronomy 31, says, Vanoichi Astir Ponai, I will hide my name in Esther. Get it, Esther Astir Ponai. So therefore, God's name is not in the Megillah. He already foretold there'll come a time when he hides behind the mask. But just because he's wearing a mask doesn't mean that he's not holding my hand. And perhaps he's holding my hand tighter when he's wearing a mask than when he's not wearing a mask. You know, Megillat Esther is the last book in Tanakh. Yes. It says, Vatichtov Esther, a giant tuff. She was the last Nevi'ah. One minute. Uh, the giant tuff, Vatichtov Esther. Why is there a giant tuff? Just like tuff is the last letter, what? Yeah. The alphabet. Megillat Esther is the last book in Tanakh. Mm. Women always get the last word. <laughs> get it? <laughs> Women always get the... I'm not a coinky dinky right. Where was I? Vatichtov Esther. So women have all the mitzvahs. One of the mitzvahs of Purim, Zizel, is to go to shul, and before they read the Megillah, they read Exodus 17. Vayova Yamolek, when Abu Mamzer attacked us the first time, Haman's granddaddy, who was that? Amolek. That's part of the mitzvahs of Purim. So just like women have to hear the Megillah Purim morning, they have to read Vayova Yamolek, or hear Vayova Yamolek Purim morning. No, they have to hear the Megillah at night. But then in the morning, before you read the Megillah in the morning, first you read by Yavayamolek, the end of Pashas Bishalach. So just like women have to hear the Megillah in the morning, they also have to read by Yavayamolek, or heard it read. They also have to do Matanus Lav Yoinim. They also have to do Mishloach Monos. And they also have to do Sudat Yayin. And they also have to say Alanisim. But isn't Pashas Zohar the Vaisa? No, now you open up one thing. No mix up apples and oranges. This coming Shabbos is Parshish Zohar. 
the week before Purim, we read not about the Amalekite attack, that's Exodus 17, that you read when? Purim morning. But Pasha Zohar is the end of Pasha's Kitetse, where you're supposed to remember the Amalekite attack. That's in the end of Pasha Kitetse. Remember what Amalek did to you. So there, the women have to hear that too. So that's the Machlokas uh, Rishonim. Most Rishonim say that women do not have to hear Pasha Zohar. Why? Because women, La B'nai Muhammad, just like women are not obligated to fight in the war, women are not supposed to fight, so therefore they don't have to remember the fighting either. So the Rambam and the, and the Chinuch, they hold Moshe, that women, just like women are not obligated to fight against Amalek, they're also not obligated to remember Amalek. So they say that women are not obligated to hear Pasha Zohar. Other Rishonim say they should hear Pasha Zohar anyway, even though they're not obligated. But everybody agrees that Purim morning, when you read Vayova Yamolek, that's not Pasha Zohar, that's the actual Amalekite attack. There, all agree that it's part of the six mitzvahs that to be done on Purim. Pasha Zohar is a week before Purim. So there, women are not obligated, but they do it anyway if they want. But that's nothing to do with Purim during the day where you are obligated to hear Pasha's Bashalach, Exodus 17 where Amalek actually attacks us, the first terrorist attack in history, unprovoked terrorist attack. So there, women have to hear it, just like they have to say Alanisim, just like they have to read the Megillah, or hear the Megillah read, and do Mishloyach Monois, Matonos Lev Yoinim, and to have the, uh, and to have the Suda. So Mishloyach Monois, Ishla Reyehu, Matonos Lev Yoinim, there's two separate mitzvahs. Even the guy, the guy is a millionaire, you can send him a Mishlech Monas. But Matonas of Yoinim is only if a person is really poor. Right? A person is poor, you give Matonas of Yoinim. You have to give at least two gifts to two poor people. Nachon? Matonas of Yoinim. But the more you give, the Ramam says of all the six mitzvahs on Purim, which is the most important? Matonas of Yoinim, he says. The Ramam says of all the six mitzvahs, the most important mitzvah is what? He says, whoever is Sameach, Lev Ani, Bipurim, Doime Lishchina. The Rambam does not engage in exaggeration, Chava. Mi Sameach, Lev Aniim, Bipurim, Hu Doime Lishchina. Rambam, what are you talking about? Why does he say that? If you make a poor person happy on Purim, you're compared to God Himself. Now, why would the Rambam say that, Chava? He doesn't say why he says it, otherwise I'd be unemployed. But that's what he says. But why does he say it, Zizel? I guess because we why? are being the Salam al we're acting, we're acting like God, we're giving stuff. Good, but why not every Wednesday? Why not when you give uh, uh, every Tuesday, uh, you're not compared to God? Because What's so unique about drunk. Purim that you're doing Because we get drunk, we have a feast. But the Rambam sense. should say that the Hilchas Tzedakah. He doesn't say the Hilchas Tzedakah, you compare it to the Shechina. Dafka is something unique about Purim when you make a poor person happy on Purim, not a regular Wednesday, then you compare well, no, it to God. So Why does he say the Hilchas Purim, Chave, not Hilchas Tzedakah? You hear my question? Yeah. No? And I think that no, give me an it's answer. because it's not easy to be happy during a time when you're being attacked and you're being So poor him, you're happy. Oppressed. Poor him, you're happy. Poor him, you're happy. Poor him, it's not just about us. We have to give to somebody else. You're right, but why? But why? To remember that there are people poor. And if we don't but there's Mitzvah to give to Doc every, every Wednesday and Friday, buddy. There's a Mitzvah to give to Doc every Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Uh, What's so unique about Purim, Rabbi Yaakov, that you're doing a Shechina? Everything is Sit down for the answer, fast and tight. We know Chav of Allah to Bidrachav. We have to walk in God's ways. What's an Oni mean? He's poor, he ain't got no money. But what's a bigger Oni? He ain't got no life. We were all on Niyim on Purim. Not only did we have no money, but they're going to take our lives away. That's a bigger Oni. We're not lacking only money, you're lacking life itself. God gave us, we were all on Niyim and Purim, Ira. Worse than having no money is what? Having no life. God was Sameach us on Purim. We were all on Niyim. He made us happy by giving us our lives back. So when we make an Oni happy on Purim, who are we acting like? God. Tafke Purim. 
We were all on Niyim, and he was Sameach us by giving us our lives back. So when we make a poor person happy, Dafka on Purim will compare to God. Giving Tzedakah all year is a great mitzvah, but only on Purim are you compared to God. Look at the Rambam's lost, and it's unbelievable. Kesev Mishnah says that every word of the Rambam is like a holy Mishnah. When the Rambam writes a word or he doesn't, he, the Kesev Mishnah says you have to study it like the Mishnah. What's the connection? Yes, because that's what God did to us. We were all on Niyim, on Purim. What's the connection to the money you give before Purim? That's a zeichel machtus a shekel. Why did we read Parshish Kolim before Adar? So the Gemara Megillah says, Haman gave... 10,000 talents of silver shkolim to Achashverosh to kill us. So God said, let's fight shekel with shekel. To neutralize Haman's shkolim, that he bribed the king, you give your machtes a shekel for tzedakah, and that will neutralize Haman's shkolim, that he bribed the king to kill us. So we fight shekel with shekel. No, because that's done before Purim Yudah. Machtes a shekel, it's not a mitzvah, it's a zecher. Today we ain't got no machtus a shekel. It's a minhag before you read the Megillah. Moshe is not a mitzvah. It's a minhag before you read the Megillah. You give zechel machtus a shekel. Symbolically neutralizing Haman Shkolim that he gave Achishverosh on Purim to kill us. But that's not part of it. How much is it? I think Rabbi Yosef said today it's about uh, 24 shekels. 24 shekels, he said. Okay? That ties into Shkolim that we read the other week. Right? But that's nothing to do with the six mitzvahs on Purim. Zechamasa Shekel Avram is a minah that you give before the Megillah, but the six are not a minah, the six are what? A mitzvah. They do it before Purim, so it ties together. You, 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 you give it right before you read the Megillah. Right? On the night. On that night, yeah. So all over the world it's when? Tuesday night. Monday night, all over the world, right? And for us it's Tuesday night. We gotta be different, Malka. We can't be with the rest of the world, right? No, because we're in the walled city. We're in the walled city, right? What walled city? What got to do with the walled city? Why do we have to be different for? Different strokes for different folks? Jerusalem is unique, Avram. It's unique. We're not like the whole world. Ira, we're not like the whole world. We are special and different. So we have to read the Megillah a different day. It plays up by the uniqueness of what? Of living in the holy city. For more of Rabbi Sprecher's teachings, visit rabbisprecher.com.